Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation to uh, talk concerning uh, the mental health component, the mental health component of uh, this endeavor and uh, the center. <laughs> As said, the, the center focuses on quality. Uh, and this means that the component should be viewed and approached through the uh, viewpoint of quality. And what, what is quality in mental health? Mental health is, is a very complex field, a very complex topic from uh, A to Z. For, uh, if we start talking, what is mental health? What is psychiatry? What is mental disorder? What is mental disease? Where is psychiatry <coughs> located in, in the field of sciences? What about our treatment, our diagnostic approaches? Where is modern psychiatry located in this continuum from primitive pre-scientific era to the individualized uh, and personalized medicine? Probably something between the assystematized medicine and the evidence-based medicine somewhere in the middle, probably, somewhere here. Uh, but this is the rule rather than the exception for medicine. However, it is important to, to, to reflect or on words and the way we talk, discuss, teach, and the way we research in the field of mental health, because the quality of our, of our words define largely where we really stand. Uh, a lot of colleagues, I would say with, uh, with sorrow, that they they are closer to the primitive pre-scientific era, while others fantasize they are somewhere uh, very close to the precision and the individualized medicine. We need to have quality, reliability, and validity to our uh, talks and to our words. So the, 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 the fundamental question where, whether psychiatry is an art or a science, the, the answer is definitely a science. Some people say it's an art, but it's not. It's a science, it, it, it obeys to the rules of, of science, it derives models like the very old and traditional uh, biopsychosocial uh, model, which was developed by Eggers back in the 70s. Uh, it, 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 Suppose that we have an interaction between biological, that's mostly genetic, psychological, that's personality. This is the way they were approaching human being and existence in the, in the 70s. And the social component. Uh, we now know today that uh, this, this is a very naive approach, but still it was a scientific approach to a very difficult question and it, it was an early uh, attempt to, to strengthen quality of the way we approach the field of mental health. Today, things are far more demanding and, and we need to refine and to, to develop much more reliable and detailed uh, models. And in this sense, we need to approach the quality also of life in our patients and of the general population, because stress is an important component of mental health and disease in general, mental disease, somatic disease, whatever kind of disease is a stressful condition that uh, it manifests itself with symptoms which pose an additional stress to the patient. The whole process of diagnosis and treatment uh, hospitalizations, the, the, the whole change in, in lifestyle, all these produce stress. And for some individuals, this will lead to a deterioration of mental health. So if we are able to improve the quality, the quality of diagnosis, the quality of treatment, the quality we approach and communicate information, the quality in the overall life of patients, then we will be able to improve the overall outcome. And the outcome would be the adjustment of the patient 
uh, at the crossroad of the disease, the personality, the adjustment, and the supporting environment. Now, it is important to note that this dark blue here, this dark blue here, is the intermediate between clinical depression with the orange and supernormal, which is in the light blue. Let's say that um, between 15 and 25, one fourth of the population lives under continuous stress in a distressful condition, depending on the economic, social situation and the international or local environment and situation. So a, a large number of people have low quality of life and they are in demand of quality services and quality help, quality passwords and tools that will help them. Overall, we know that mental illness, especially the most severe end of it, increases death ratio by approximately 1.5 to 2. It doubles the death rate, the mortality rate, and also stigma. The, the stigma related with any aspect of mental disorder or mental health or, or uh, individualism within the socioeconomic environment. This leads to high degrees of stress, stigmatization, and low quality of life, and eventually to poorer health. And this is reflected mainly in primary health care, where you can see in the blue that, as may, uh, that the more somatic complaints are manifested by patients in primary care, the highest the chance they are suffering from a mental disorder. And the blue shows that this is highly likely to be depression. And these mental disorders are highly comorbid with uh, a lot of somatic disorders. More than half of them have any somatic disorders, especially obesity, dyslipidemia, uh, cardiac uh, disorders, um, or uh, uh, immune disorders, cancer, uh, and endocrinological disorders. And the environment also contributes with mass, mass disasters, contributes to high stress in, in the population, both in those directly exposed to this mass destruction and to those that are pure observers, but still they are afraid that this will happen again and again. And uh, they are afraid that the social uh, security and the social uh, structure will not protect them from the consequences of such a disaster if it occurs on them. And eventually it's suicidality. You can see the darkest the area, the highest the suicidality rates. To the left are the male suicidal rates, the, to, the, uh, to the right are the female suicidal rates. For Europe you can see a trend from south to north east. This picture has not changed through the ages although individual values do, uh, do fluctuate. This is the total homicides, again, a similar uh, trend. And this is the uh, population getting older throughout the, the globe. Uh, this is the, uh, the picture for Greece in, 50 year, in 30 years from now. That would be a reverse triangle. Uh, a lot of things will not be sustainable under such demographics. Also, the quality of services, the needs, the quality indices, everything will be changed in, in a generation from now. And we need to be able to adjust to this. And also, we need to be able to adjust to more personalized things like the therapeutic um, the therapeutic relationship between patient and physician, the alliance between patient, physician, <clears throat> and the family, the, 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 the family and the patient should be able to confess, to, to accept things, to tell little, little difficult secrets of their life in order to achieve some kind of better diagnosis and treatment. Uh, so uh, let me conclude that uh, quality in mental health is a very complex issue. We need to tackle every, every bit of it to synthesize the whole picture and to try to arrive at a better and sustainable constellation of uh, actions and uh, uh, proposals 
for the society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Professor Futulakis. An excellent <laughs> presentation and uh, really appreciated the link mental health, quality of care. I think this is very important. Certainly the area of mental health is one where we see many times the challenges in terms of quality and quality of care. And it's probably one where countries and organizations can show more progress and where we really need to, to show progress. is also a proxy on how health systems perform overall in terms of quality and, and, and that is really great. Thank you for that. So, yeah, and thank you very much for strictly following the time allocated. I'm now delighted to introduce my dear uh, 